so now we want to think about what the uh, magnitude of k really means. And we saw this in that last little example we just did on the previous video. And again, we're saying that k equals the concentration of your products raised to the power of their coefficients divided by the concentration of the reactants raised to the power of their coefficients. So um, just like you would think, if you see a value where KEQ is greater than 1, means you have a lot of this stuff in your numerator. So your products are going to be greater in concentration than your reactants. And if your K value is less than 1, it means that you've got more of your reactants, you've got more of what's in your denominator. Um, so we have this example here. This reaction doesn't show up very well in green, but hopefully you can see that that we have A plus 3B yields C, and um, hold on one second. Okay, so we have A plus 3B yields C, and what this means, well, the first question it says, what has to happen for the reaction to get to equilibrium? It really doesn't matter what the reaction is, the answer is always going to be the same, and that's going to be that the forward reaction will have to equal the reverse reaction. And how difficult is it for the forward reaction to occur? So in other words, what are the chances of it happening? If we think about what that forward reaction is, we're taking four particles, 1A and 3B, and we're trying to combine them into one. That is very difficult to try and combine. Difficult to have four particles come together as one. So very difficult to have four particles come together as one. We know that the world tends towards disorder. Things break apart a lot more than they will just all of a sudden um, come together and be organized. So the question is, what do the concentration of the reactants have to be for this to happen? Well, let's use an analogy. Let's say that we all have little sticky balls of clay, and I chose four people, and we went outside and said, okay, on the count of three, we're going to throw our balls of clay up into the air, and you're going to make them stick together and form one ball of clay. Again, that would be really, really hard. The only way that we can maybe have that happen is if we got the entire school to have a ball of clay, and on the count of three, we all threw them up in the air. Yeah, there's a chance that four of them will come together and stick together as one particle. So your concentrations of your reactants would have to be very high for this to happen. How difficult is the reverse reaction? Well, this is going to be easy because all we're doing is breaking something apart. So easy to break apart. And what do the concentrations of the products have to be for that to happen? It doesn't matter. They can be low. Can be low. And it would still occur. And um, what does that tell us about the magnitude of K? Well, since what we're saying is that this reverse reaction is more likely, it's going to be that your C breaks down to form the four particles then what that means is that your magnitude is going to be less than 1. Okay, and then last little example here. We've got a situation where, um, again, the question is, what has to happen for the reaction to get to equilibrium? Your forward reaction has to equal your reverse reaction. How difficult is it for this forward reaction? So here we have A breaking down to six particles. That doesn't sound very difficult at all. Let's say that that's pretty easy for something to break down. Um, concentrations, well, those reactants can be pretty low, and it'll still happen, can be low. And how difficult is it for the reverse reaction? Again, we're seeing that that forward is more likely the reverse reaction is not going to happen. You're not going to have six particles come together as one. So it's going to be very difficult. And what do the concentration of the products have to be for this to happen? They would have to be very high. And so what that means is that K would have to be, ends up being greater than one. I didn't write that very well. There we go.
k is greater than one. ta-da.